So Scarlett Johansson, probably most well known for her role as Black Widow in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, did a little bit of a sit down interview over at The Hollywood Reporter with other actresses such as Jennifer Lopez, Renee Zellweger, Lupita Nyong'o and Laura Dern. And part of that interview, Scarlett Johansson came out and said that she was tired of being hypersexualized, that she almost quit the industry over it. She didn't want to be typecasted and that she places all of the blame on some dudes in the industry for her troubles. But I've got a little bit of a question about this because this claim doesn't really make all that much sense. Scarlett Johansson apparently, according to her, saw this as the only way to advance her career, but she continues to take these roles that she is complaining about up to this day. But before we go ahead and delve too deep into this, uh, I want to go ahead and ask you to share this video around to help us combat some of the weirdness that is going on on YouTube these days. What with all the problems I'm having with YouTube changing the categories of the video to auto and V vehicles for some reason, and the suggestion ban that has been going around since June. So it does us a huge favor over here if you share this video around, if you like and hit the comment button, and of course if you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. But either way, this story comes to us from Bounding Into Comics, very good place to go ahead and get your news. I will be putting a link to the, uh, to the article in the description down below. They do a very good job over there. But either way, according to the article, Scarlett Johansson had this to say, it's so different now, the climate is so different now. There there are so many wonderful opportunities for women of every age to play all different types of care of people. I feel when I was working in my early 20s and even in my late teens and early 20s, I felt that I got somehow typecast. I was very hypersexualized. I guess at the time it seemed okay to everyone. It was another time, even though it wasn't part of my own narrative. It was kind of crafted for me by probably a bunch of dudes in the industry. And I guess that worked then. It was really difficult for me to try and figure out how to get out of being an ingenue or the other woman because it was never anything that I had intended. I remember thinking at the time, maybe I need a different job in the industry that sort of would be more fulfilling because there seemed to be nowhere else to go. So there's a couple of points that I really want to hit on with this. And the first is that I can completely understand Scarlett Johansson not wanting to be typecasted. Typecasting is something that a lot of actors in Hollywood are worried about. And we've heard people as big as Bruce Willis come out and talk about it, or even Dwayne The Rock Johnson. In fact, D uh, Dwayne Johnson is a great example. If he was only playing, you know, the big action hero, we wouldn't know that he's actually a really funny guy, and we wouldn't see him in movies like Moana or Get Shorty or even Central Intelligence. Leonardo DiCaprio, another good example. If he was only ever just, you know, he, it, earlier on in his career, he was always typecast as the, you know, the guy in the romance story and things like that. But then if that ended up continuing throughout his career, we wouldn't have seen him in films like Django Unchained, The Revenant, The Departed, Shutter Island, you know, all those movies that really let uh, uh, wider audiences know that, hey, this guy can act. This guy is not just that annoying dude from Titanic anymore. So as far as that particular concern, I completely agree with Scarlett Johansson. Type, being typecast is basically the worst thing that can happen for your career as an actor. The next point that I want to focus on is that, yeah, obviously when you are a, a young actor or actress in Hollywood, taking on those sexualized roles is definitely a great way to help you further your career. Uh, and this is not something that is unique to women, like Scarlett Johansson seems to be suggesting. This is something that is true for men as well. You know, I gave the example of Leonardo DiCaprio uh, with the with typecasting. If Leonardo Di uh, DiCaprio wasn't found, uh, if a lot of women didn't find Leonardo DiCaprio as a track active as they did, he would not have gotten as many roles as he did because let's be honest, back in the day, that guy could not act for shit. But as his career went on and he started working with better directors and really finding his, you know, his his niche as an actor, in a sense, uh, he really started to improve quite a bit. So, yeah, he, he leaned on his looks a little bit to further his career. And then he really started perfecting his acting. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. So, no, it's not something that is exclusive to women like Scarlett Johansson wants to suggest. But as for, you know, oh, she doesn't see any way for to further her career. She doesn't see any 
anyway for blah, 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 all that. I mean, the problem that I have with this is that she continues to take on these sexualized roles well after the fact that she has already become a household name. In order to really get into this as much as I want to, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a breakdown of Scarlett Johansson's career. So Scarlett Johansson started acting when she was very young. I believe back in, uh, back in like the early 1990s, mid 1990s, something like that. She had a couple of small roles in theaters, but I think her first job in cinema actually came in 1996. But it wasn't actually until around 2003 that Scarlett Johansson had her first big break in the form of a little movie called Lost in Translation, where she starred opposite Bill Murray. Now, it's an interesting note that I want to point out that this movie actually starts with like a 45 second long close up of Scarlett Johansson's ass. But yeah, it's just kind of funny. Um, but uh, Lost in Translation was a big hit. The movie was made on a $4 million budget. It uh, ended up bringing home something like $100 million in the box office. It got all kinds of awards. It was just the perfect thing for her career. It got her all the attention she could have ever wanted. And shortly after that, the, back in 2006, actually, Scarlett Johansson doubled down on taking these, you know, sometimes needlessly sexualized roles, which she went in on and did a nude cover shoot with Vanity Fair with Kira Knightley, something that I would not really advance her career at all. I mean, being on the cover of Vanity Fair is not what it used to be. Uh, right around this point in time, Hollywood was focused focusing a lot more on social media advertising. And of course, she was never forced into doing any of this. If she didn't want to be on the cover of Vanity Fair naked with Kira Knightley, she would not have, she just wouldn't have taken it. It's not like there was anybody, you know, forcing her to do this by, by contract or anything. So that to me seemed like it was something that Scarlett Johansson did because she wanted to do it because it was a very, uh, you know, tasteful, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It was a very tasteful photo shoot. It wasn't just, you know, uh, something pornographic in nature. It was very artistic actually. Uh, but then in 2010, Scarlett Johansson had her second big break when she got the role of Black Widow in Iron Man 2. And then she continued on with the Black Widow role and her career just exploded from there. So right around 2010, Scarlett Johansson's already made it. She's the big name. She's got the brand behind her. She's ready to go. Sky's the limit. She can turn down jobs that she doesn't want to do left and right and not have to be worried about, you know, getting another acting gig, getting a, uh, getting a paycheck and everything like that. But then, then in 2013, Scarlett Johansson makes all kinds of headlines because she's going to go ahead and do her first nude scenes in a movie in a, uh, in a flick called Under the Skin, which nobody remembers that movie by name. They just remember that as the movie in which Scarlett Johansson gets naked. But Under the Skin was actually a very small movie. If anything, it was a downgrade for Scarlett Johansson. So it's not like this thing did anything to further her career. If she didn't want to take that part and didn't want to be in that movie, she could have very easily passed it on to another actress who wanted that role. But then comes Ghost in the Shell, another role where Scarlett Johansson would have been very sexualized and things like that. I mean, she's running around the movie in a lot of scenes and, you know, a skin tight, flesh colored outfit, giving the appearance that she is, in fact, naked and everything. So, again, this is already after she's a big name. She's not getting any more attention for this movie. And then she went and did Lucy, a film that was much more, uh, you know, where her role was much more sexualized than uh, Black Widow. And this was also a movie that was much smaller than her Black Widow role. It wasn't doing anything for her career other than adding yet another credit to her resume. But then Scarlett Johansson signed on to do a little movie called Rub and Tug, which ended up becoming a huge controversy for her, where she was going to be playing a, a real life, I can't remember the name of the actual uh, historical figure, but a real world transgender, uh, like mobster type. And in a, a role like that, there's probably going to be some scenes where we see her like taping up her breasts or something like that. So there would have been some sexualized elements to that role. Again, very small role. It would not have been a big success without Scarlett Johansson. And even then, it probably would have been nowhere near bringing in anywhere near as much money as the Black Widow movies. It would not have gotten her any more press than where she was going. It was a step down. So in this instance, if Scarlett Johansson wanted to take on these heavily, heavily sexualized roles, it actually would have been a downgrade for her career. So I don't so I don't get what she's saying at this damn point. 
I mean, it's not like these roles are furthering her career any. It just, it just seems like she she wants to play victim. That's that's what it is. She wants to play victim. There's nothing wrong with taking on roles where you play the sexy character. Yes, I can under I can understand completely uh, Scarlett Johansson's point that she doesn't want to be typecast and she wants to take on a wide variety of roles. And you know what? There's probably like I'm really meh on Scarlett Johansson's acting, and my big problem with it is that regardless of what role she has been playing lately, and just looking at her big ones, you know, as Black Widow, and in Lucy, and in um, uh, Ghost in the Shell, she basically brings the same performance to the table every time, and it's boring to watch, it really is boring to watch, but maybe, you know, if she starts taking on a wider variety of roles, we'll find that she's actually really good in something else. For all we know, maybe Scarlett Johansson is another case like Dwayne Johnson, where, yeah, okay, he's he's very solid in action movies and everything like that, but damn, this guy really can shine when he's put in a comedy role. Uh, but, yeah, Scarlett Johansson, I think you're overreacting. I don't think the only reason uh, that you can, the, the only thing that's making your career is that you take on sexualized roles. Yeah, I get the whole typecasting thing, and I 110% agree with you there, but... At the end of the day, she's the one who decided to take on these roles. She could have very easily turned them down, especially after she'd already broken big twice with first with Lost in Translation and second with Black Widow. But she continues to take on these roles and she doesn't have to. She doesn't need to. She can be in whatever movie she wants. She's a household name for crying out loud. She's got tons of awards under her belt. She can take whatever jobs she wants at this point. If she wants to go play a... a you know, something like, you know, more comedic roles or more dramatic roles or things like that. She can easily go ahead and do that. So, yeah, I think I think Scarlett Johansson is the one to blame for her not being in certain roles. I don't think it's the fault of some dudes in the industry, but either way, that's just my two cents on the matter. Let me know what you think about it. Do you think Scarlett Johansson is right? Do you think she's wrong? Do you think she's uh, a good actress or do you think she's kind of are you, are you like me where you think she's just kind of meh in all of these roles that she's been in lately? And she definitely needs to start uh, exploring new career opportunities to see where she really fits best, kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio did. Uh, let me know about all that down in the comment section. As always, don't forget to like and share and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. A huge thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon and Subscribestar and through the YouTube memberships. You guys help keep things going here. And until next time, everyone, please remember to take it easy, have fun, and let's make entertainment great again.